Black Panther, it's rumored that Beyonce Knowles is being cast for the for Black Panther episode, uh, uh, Black Panther, Black Panther two, right? So keep or cancel Beyonce, and she's supposed to be playing Storm, right? For all comic book lovers, so keep or cancel Storm, being uh, Beyonce playing Storm in Black Panther two. I'm, I'm gonna start be, with you, Ellen. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I don't think there's any merit to these rumors. Every three months, people are typecasting Beyonce into some superhero role. <laughs> so it's I'm going to cancel it because I think there's a good chance that it's fake and I will not talk about fake news. Cancel. <laughs> it's keep her canceled, Beyonce. I'm going to cancel and I pray to God that they do not cast her for this role. I will be so angry that I'd have to decide if I'm going to go see the movie or not. Most people are, and I might do it because of the hype, but mm -hmm. I, this is, I want this, I want Black Panther to grow and to mature and get better. And mm -hmm. that would not be conducive to my vision <laughs> <laughs> if they cast Beyonce in this role. I'm not a fan of her acting skills, and I just think she should stick to what she's great at. Beautiful in <laughs> other areas, but please do not do this to this movie. Cancel Listen, the idea. <laughs> I cancel. Listen, you can't be perfect at everything, okay? Sometimes you got to know your limitations. I actually watched uh, her one of her first films, which is Austin Powers Gold Member, when she when she was in that when she was in that movie, and that didn't go well. And that was the last of the Austin Powers series. We'll never see another animated series of of uh, the Lion King. She killed Mufasa, Scar, and Simba in that movie. So I'm gonna cancel this because if she Storm is not from Houston, <laughs> all right? So I'm gonna cancel Beyonce playing this role. It may bring more notoriety and people seeing it, but it's just, I don't think it's, I don't think it's needed. But the rumors are actually, there's actually some validity to the rumors because apparently Disney, Marvel, they're trying to sign her to some like, uh, some deal to make sure that she can be in some of these movies. They just don't know which one. And I think that's where the rumor came is like, oh, she could play Storm. So, oh, so uh, who, who could a black woman play? And then they just throw darts at the board. I don't like it. Exactly. <laughs> like, and why is it so hard for them to cast someone for Storm since Halle Berry? Like, since then, it seemed like it's been so difficult for them to find someone to play that role. The Storm is such an awesome character. Like, you need to have, like, they have the other young lady who played Aaliyah in that Lifetime movie. Uh, play, she played Storm in, uh, the early Mar early Batman movie, so um, so yeah, so we'll we'll you know we'll see about that. Uh, in other news, we have uh, Alan. You got that with the NASCAR? Yes, my yes. brothers and my sisters. I actually am going to read their statement verbatim. Mm. Let me um, see if I can pull it up while we while we do that as well. Please go. So NASCAR in the most unlikely statement to come out this week, mm -hmm. released a statement in regards to everything that's going on. And like I said, I'm just gonna read it verb verbatim. The NASCAR family, mm -hmm. like so many others, is hurt and angered by the immensely troubling events that have taken place across our country in recent weeks. For us to heal and move forward as a nation, we all need to listen more and be united in the stand against racism hatred, senseless violence, and loss of life. And mm -hmm. we must hold ourselves accountable to driving positive change. Y'all hear that pun? Driving positive change? Okay. Oh, Part that's two. another one of those. That's another one of those. Man, this, this line's going to slap. Let's yeah, get it in yeah. there. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, this is going to kill him. You're going to kill him. All right. So while our sport has made progress over the years, there remains much work to be done, and we fully embrace our responsibility to help bridge racial divide that continues to exist in our country. We must do better in our commitment to promoting equality and inclusion continues and up to promoting quality and inclusion continues and will never waver. I think they messed up linguistically on that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, NASCAR has put out that statement. Um, in addition to that, they have announced that the Confederate flag will be not tolerated in their- Man. Venues in their events moving forward. So 
that was a big shocker to me because there's not a lot of things that the good old boys like more than the Confederate flag. Um, we do have one driver that has already decided to quit. Uh, after further investigation, he was 0 and 31. So he was trash anyway. And so he was looking for exit strategy. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm out of here. Can, I'm not. <laughs> it's definitely understandable that someone who went 0 and 31 has some sort of uh, alliance to the Confederacy flag. Am I right? So you're a loser. <laughs> you're a loser if you if you rep the Confederate flag. Exactly. You know what's funny is when I moved down to Florida from Boston, right? Uh, to me, when you're up north, you know, okay, the Confederate flag, we automatically uh, attribute that to being a racist. And now I know that. And people, when I came down here, was like, oh, no, that's not what it is. But that is what the fuck it is. Like, you are <laughs> telling me that you are racist and you, you uh, practice that religion of white supremacy. And these are one of those symbols. And white supremacists love symbols. So now that NASCAR has said, hey, this symbol that you guys like to say, it's about our history. It's about our heritage. Their heritage that they're talking about is maintaining the system of white supremacy. So, so NASCAR is probably going to look blackity black, black, black. You might get some more black drivers. You know, we know how to drive. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I saw I saw a comment earlier and which mm -hmm. rung true. They was like, listen, if, if NASCAR wasn't so fundamentally racist, Mm -hmm. Black people would love to be in it because it's not a lot of things that black people like, especially in the South, more than their cars. This is something that we grow up uh, learning how to fix and, and build and put together from the inside out. So it's not that black people don't have an interest in these things. Um, you know, another thing that they're going to have to also figure out is uh, NASCAR, from what I understand, kind of like hockey, it's not an easy sport to get into financially. Mm. Because who just has NASCAR parts and teams and and yeah. and uh, you know the facilities to kind of to 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 practice and hone those skills uh, coming from maybe a, a urban community or a community without those type of resources. So uh, if they really want to address inequality in NASCAR, they have to really start from the ground up and creating yeah. spaces that uh, underprivileged kids don't have on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I feel I feel you. I feel you. So I mean, I may I may go to a NASCAR. I might go to a NASCAR event. Might feel a little bit more uh more more comfortable with it. All right. So uh the next story we have, switching gears as far as, as we talk about our theme of hide and seek. Uh remember Starbucks? Remember Starbucks? You like Starbucks, Alan? Um, I'm good for a, a, a chocolate mocha, maybe a little frap every now and then. I've actually never uh, ordered anything from Starbucks ever in my life. Like I, I just haven't, but I've been to Starbucks Privilege. for their Wi-Fi, So I've been there, right? Um, Starbucks uh, put out a statement, an internal memo. And the story is that Starbucks has ba banned employees from wearing anything in support of Black Lives, of Black Lives Matter. Okay. All right. And here's what the memo says in, in, uh, in short, it says uh, ex, uh, it's a policy, a company policy against accessories. It says uh, it's banning because it's advocated. You can't advocate for a political, religious, or personal issue on their clothing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's their stance. However, people said, "But wait a minute, Starbucks." They said the Starbucks LGBTQ plus partners wear LGBTQ plus pins on their shirts. So where you're saying one can't be, uh, you can't talk about black lives, but then you're supporting uh, the LGBTQ plus and you're partnering with them. So which one is it? And so this is that back to that hide and seek. Are you for social justice issues and civil rights or are you against because it's company policy? Remember the two black guys that got arrested a couple of years ago where were they arrested? What store? Do, do tell us. Tell us, TJ. <laughs> it was Starbucks. Starbucks. And then Starbucks came out and their CEO came out. I actually wrote I actually wrote an article about it. You can find it in the Orlando Sentinel as a guest contributor. Uh, Starbucks came out and said, wait a minute, we're not racist. We're going to do some training. We're going to remember they shut down all of their stores. Yeah. And they said they were going to do all this training about all this racial sensitivity. But now present day, that was a couple, that was just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was either last year or 2018. 
And now present day, they're saying, if you're an employee, you can't wear anything supporting Black Lives Matter. And I'll tell you why, right? The reason that Starbucks is telling people not to wear anything Black Lives Matter is because they don't want their clientele to be offended and they don't want to lose that dollar from the people that don't support the Black Lives Matter because they've done the research and I'm pretty sure they're like, hmm, the majority of our folks who attend our, uh, who uh, patronize our business will uh, probably won't come back or protest or say that they're going to boycott. So this is them doing that sleight of hand, hide and seek, whether you're an ally or not. And so uh, I don't fuck with Starbucks. I don't think anybody else should fuck with Starbucks. I think that you, everybody should go. Um, I don't know. What's the alternative to Starbucks? Where should we go? Um, the coffee bean? What, where, do we, where do you go besides Starbucks? But yo, get your coffee somewhere else. Go get yourself a, what is it, Keurig? A yeah, Keurig, no, the Keurig, the Keurig machine? Yeah, so we don't support we don't support Starbucks. I I I can't I can't rock with Starbucks anymore. Well, you, you done did your trainings and you're still and you you're you're suppressing the voices or the stance. Or, and how is Black Lives Matter a political stance? Like why is that? Like let's talk about that. Why is that up for debate? <laughs> like yeah. I think Black Lives Matter, and you're like, <laughs> what's the what's the uh, it's not all like, because that's just a, a roundabout way because if black lives don't matter, then you really don't care about our lives. What you're really saying is most lives matter. So saying that you should be treated like a human being, that's a political stance that Starbucks is like, whoa, we just we just don't want to get involved in that. So, um, you know, they're showing their uh, their true colors. What do you what do you think, Ish? Well, first of all, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't really go there. Um, I don't really go to any coffee place. Sometimes I might go to Dunkin' Donuts or something if I'm getting a donut for my daughter yeah. and get like a mocha latte. But outside of that, coffee never worked for me. So I like I don't care about any of these businesses, <laughs> to be mm -hmm. quite frank. I don't go there anyway. Uh, as far as their their actions, my thought is they just need to, whatever they're applying, whatever company or policy that they're um implementing and enforcing it needs to be across the board it needs to be equal it needs to be everyone needs to be held to that same standard and it does not need to be uh rooted in racism or anything of that manner so but just because they were hypocritical is an issue for me but outside of that i am fine with people implementing certain policies that you are aware of when you go to those businesses, as long as they are not rooted in inequality and racism and things of that matter, sexism, nepotism, and all of those things. And you definitely have to apply it to everyone who works there. And mm -hmm. that's the issue. They didn't do that. So I would, is this a keep or cancel? Uh, no, you can keep, you oh. can keep or cancel it. Go ahead. Improv oh, well, too. just go ahead. Yeah, so we off that. Ahead, I, would, I would cancel. Yeah, I would cancel on the grounds of hip hypocrisy. Mm, mm, I like that. I like that. Yeah, the hypocrisy. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, another discussion I wanted to get into. So there's been a lot of discussion on, on Black Twitter and with everything that's going on with the NFL and a lot of players speaking out. A lot of people have been kneeling. A lot of people have been kneeling, say, talk about solidarity. A lot of people have been praying. And so the topic has come up as for uh, Colin Kaepernick as to should Colin Kaepernick key, uh, play in the NFL again? Should he be offered a contract in the NFL? Should Colin Kaepernick play in the NFL? And I really wanted to get your thoughts before I I, get, I shared mine. Uh, Alan, do you think Colin Kaepernick should play in the NFL again if given the option? Um, I think it's obvious. I think to me it's been obvious over the last couple of years that that's where his heart is. Um, he hasn't given up on a dream. So I, th I think that would make him happy. And so for that reason alone, I would say, go ahead and do it. Mm, mm. What about you, Ish? I I know you're, you're not a big sports, you're not a big football person, are you? 
I watch- like football. I like going okay. to the events. I like the environment. I actually do enjoy it. And I actually okay. know what's going on as far as like a field goal and a touchdown and how many yards before the first down. I stand, I stand I have some knowledge of it, you know. I stand like corrected I always, with my sexism. I stand corrected. I'll, yes, you do stand corrected with your sexism. And I always <laughs> say I, <laughs> I grew up with boys, so I have some knowledge. Anyway, I personally yes. think that Colin Kaepernick should say fuck the NFL. I think he's beyond it. I think he's past it. And I think he has so much more beautiful things ahead of him just in speaking and making a difference in the world uh, that's beyond football. But if that's what he wants to do, then do it. Um, but yeah, I would be like, man, fuck y'all. Like, yeah. <laughs> to like just no, no simple. doubt. And he's, be, he's past it. Like he has so, like as far as money and just uh, notoriety, his, his prevalence, all of that, I think he'll have it all without the NFL. Mm. Yo, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Ish. And, you know, I think Colin Kaepernick has become bigger than the sport of football. Now, let me say this. I don't want to make the decision for the brother. If he wants to play football, that's fine. But I would like to tell him he doesn't have to. He doesn't have anything to prove. Because the first thing that happens is if his play is not at the is not to the level or satisfactory, everyone's going to say and try to discredit him and say, well, that's the reason why he wasn't in the NFL this whole time. When we, when everybody with a brain knows that that's not true. Um, this is similar to uh, my, my concern is they're going to do to Colin Kaepernick what they did to uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was hated and vilified when he was at his prime. Like when he was, you know, protesting and uh, going to the Vietnam War and like he, he was vilified. He was hated. They hated the fact that this athletic uh, winner of a black man was out there talking about and putting the racists in their place and telling them what it is and, and being unapologetic about it and telling them, no, I'm not going to go and kill some other people who look like me. You don't give me justice, justice right here. Ali stood for something. Kaepernick stood for something. And his message is so much bigger than the NFL. Um, But everyone likes to honor you when after the fact. So first it's that, oh, Black folks, we're just supposed to accept this beating, this treatment of being beaten and being dogged out. And then later on, come back and say, oh, we forgive and hug him and stuff. I would be very disappointed if 10... 20 years from now, when Cap can't play and he's older and the Afro is gray, that they come put uh, Will and Cap on the, to the uh, football field, or, or it is four, 40 years from now, wheeling him onto the football field, giving him a medal for, for uh, protesting when they vilified him right now. So I think he should never play, in my opinion. He has the ability to play. I think he should have make the, have the choice. It's right now it's about the choice. And I think he should choose uh, not to play in the NFL uh, because of what they did. So it was never about him losing a job. It was never about a job, his movement. It was about bringing light, uh, the injustice that we face and directly impact the communities uh, and the police brutality. Cap did that. And so he was willing to risk. And, and as an activist, you know, you have to count the cost and he was willing to make that make that sacrifice so if he does play i hope he plays on his terms but i would hate for if his play declines for that to be used as a tool to discredit discredit our brother because his work and his stance and his and his uh his movement that he created is more powerful than than scoring a touchdown so we should celebrate him for that and not worry about him ever throwing a pass or completing a pass again so that's that's my stance on it. Uh, go ahead. No, I just this is what I'm thinking. I keep smiling. I'm like on a funny note. I'm over here like I hope I never marry a football player because I feel like this clip will be used against me. <laughs> like she was like at the NFL and now she's yeah, married yeah. to one of the players. She's like, look, I'm the, the NFL wise reality <laughs> show. They're gonna play this clip back. Exactly. And they be like, they be like, listen. Remember? Didn't she- she Pull a you Kevin done, Hart on me. <laughs> yeah, they they you done cost uh your your future hubby a million dollars, a million dollars by that by talking. Um 
Yo, so without further ado, before we get to that, I do want to make a quick announcement for some local stuff that's going on here in Orlando for our Orlando listeners. We are an Orlando-based uh, podcast. It's where I reside. There's going to be a a rally. There's a, two rallies um, this weekend at City Hall. One for one is Black Lives Matter, and the one is specifically uh, to honor Breonna Taylor. Everyone's meeting at three o'clock at the um, at City Hall in the in that plaza. So um, yes, as far as the marching, marching is marching is working. But as we know. It's not the only thing that we can do. Everything works together for us good. We gotta, there is, a, there is a voting and a civic engagement component to it. There's an economic component to it. There is a social media component to it. So everybody needs to find their role, to find their niche of how they can uh, you be an asset to the movement and be best utilized and then do that work and do it, uh, do it with excellence. So um, there's a part, there's a place for everybody in the movement. So. Uh, keep it going. And Orlando has been putting some pressure on. I did a press conference today uh, about uh, some of this uh, misdirection that the city and law enforcement are are doing. So uh, it is what it is. It's going on across the country. Uh, I don't get too upset about it, but I, what I won't do is I won't stifle the, cre- the, the creativity or the energy of other activists. And I'm starting to realize, uh, you know, with us, you know, some people got to learn the hard way. And so what we're dealing with across the country, we got a lot of uh, Negro overseers that are just happy the way things are. And so now law enforcement are pulling the reins on the overseers and the Negro whispers and saying, y'all need to calm down, calm the waters down. So now they're having these forums and, and talking in circles and these workshops that we've been doing for almost 10 years, right? I don't know when people are gonna get tired of having these town halls and having these meetings with catering where everybody looking and feeling important, but there's no justice and there's no change. So um, people are going to have to grow and mature. And like, and I've always said it in down, down South, specifically in Florida, here in Orlando, I feel like our community is about 25 years behind uh, the progress that we have to be, that we have to make and that progress that we want to make or achieve. And that progress really starts in the mind. So some of our activists who are younger really need to uh, touch the hot stove and realize I don't need to trust that pastor because he's a snake. I don't need to trust this this politician because they're gonna screw me over in the long run. Some of them need to touch that hot stove in order for them to really feel the, the growth of defeat, okay? The growth of disappointment as far as activism in this movement. And I don't wanna take that away from folks. As much as I can, Yell at the screen like everybody does with a horror movie. Watch out. Don't trip over this. Please. Look, he's right around the corner. As much as I can yell and scream and do that, that's not my role. That's not what I'm best utilized for in this movement. I'm a strategist. I'm a journalist. I have a voice. I have a platform. We're building something special here with a soapbox. My job is to kind of keep get the ball rolling and then hand it off. And I think me navigating people through the landmines it's one thing for me to say, hey, if you if you step on that, you're going to blow up. And unfortunately, there are going to be some folks that have to blow up, that have to be uh, casualties, of, casualties of war, have that disappointment before they actually move on and, and do some change here in our community. So, um, but with that being said, there is a march this weekend. Um, I will do what I can. And if we're not going to vote out some of these people who are the perpetuators of violence. If we're not gonna vote out some of these people, most of these people who are still around, who have implemented these uh, oppressive policies, then we're really not talking about shit. We're just out here throwing temper tantrums and I'm not about that temper tantrum stuff. So um, this Soapbox platform is not just something that's locally for Orlando. Like we want to grow this so that we can reach out to a variety of communities in, in, in a plethora of, in a different, uh, in so many areas across the country. So Orlando is not, is not the end game, but Orlando is home. And sometimes, you know, you probably gotta, I gotta, I, maybe I gotta learn to love folks uh, from afar. So I, that's stuff that I've noticed. I know that's my little, uh, the wake up rant, which is kind of classic. That's an old segment we used to do uh, here on the show. But, um, but yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've learned. There's some people, 
you got to give people time to grow. And, you know, this area, they're going to show me on August 18th whether or not they're ready or not. So, but good news is this has been one year for the Soapbox. And so we have a segment here on the Soapbox is the moral of the story. And so please uh, share your thoughts about the journey. Uh, this is y'all time to talk about it. And then I'll share my thoughts and then we'll wrap. So moral of the story. I'm gonna start with Alan. Alan. Um, wow. More of the story, I would say is time flies, man. Time flies. Um I don't, I'm not even well, I know for sure I wasn't even like in this apartment in this space last year. Um I'm happy that uh one one of the things that uh the corona and the lockdown has afforded us is some more consistency, um, some more camaraderie. And I'm grateful for that. Um, also, I know during these times, a lot of times it becomes an outlet for us, a little, that's sometimes needed more than necessary when life was quote unquote normal. So, I mean, I'm happy to be here, man. I'm proud of TJ for, for spearheading this whole thing, um, ish. I appreciate you for being here. Uh, the ladies, Giovanni, um, and Jesse, I appreciate them. I appreciate their perspective. I appreciate everyone who's contributed to the platform within the last year. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for having me and um, to infinity and beyond. You know what I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Ish. <laughs> for me, I think I joined the team in November. Uh, and I remember our initial conversations where I was just like, oh, you know, I'll do the research, I'll listen to the podcast, the things that you have people do mm -hmm. before they come on and see if they can fit in. And I was like, but I like you, TJ. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an energy person. I'll, I can commit to certain things when I'm feeling a certain type of way based on a person's energy. So I'm glad that that still remains the same, that um, I still appreciate your energy. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very proud to see you push something you believe in and keep working mm -hmm. at it and keep working hard just as a creator and a person who's been in your shoes before, I'm happy to see that you are not giving up and that you're very, you're very conscious of who you bring on. You really show that you care about your work. And that's extremely important for me to be alongside people who care about what they're doing. Um, and it's been great to meet Jess, Giovanni, Giovanni or Giovanni and mm -hmm. Alan and like see the different perspectives. I think Alan's perspective to me is probably one that I relate to the most. I think I already stated that, but I like to see like what he's going to say to see if we're going to disagree on everything or on anything, because a lot of the time we do agree. So I actually, I'm happy when we disagree. <laughs> Alan, mm -hmm. just FYI, I'm like, finally, <laughs> it's not like I'm talking to myself or thinking to myself when I'm listening mm -hmm. to Alan. Uh, and then Jess is just hilarious. And then I love Giovanni's perspective, just having that journalism background and still being in it right now, uh, having those facts ready, it's really necessary to have just mm -hmm. to kind of make a, a well-rounded show. So I'm just happy, again, to be alongside people who are using their brains, it's resources, it's connections. I'm happy just to know y'all and be able to reach out to y'all as people. Appreciate that. Uh, my moral of the story is, um, I don't know, and not, and I'm not gonna get all sentimental because I know this is not the celebration that we actually wanted. I actually owe y'all a real celebration for all the hard work and dedication that y'all have, and and I really want to just say thank you and have I have so much gratitude in my heart because it's not easy, right? Statistically speaking, for anybody who wants to start a podcast, anybody who wants to start a media outlet, most podcasts don't last. Um, I think the average is four to six months for, for a crew to who start a podcast and finish. Most people like disband, they break off, whatever. And even though the soapbox have had our trials and our, our adversity, um, it's always been steadfast on hey, let's let's stay to the mission, let's keep let's keep moving forward, and we're ever evolving. And I think that's probably the most uh, that I the most thing that's something I could take away from this is that we're always evolving. Whether it's you know getting new hosts like like Ish who brings something so uh, brings a more of a a, a 
a different perspective, something that's that's gritty, that's real, but also very polished in her approach of how her delivery is and in her in your her professionalism and really helping me and and staying on top of me on things. So each person on the podcast actually helped me as not just a host, but as a person, as an individual. Alan is there for if I have crazy ideas and he could reel me in and then he gives his insight and those perspectives that most people would be like, yo, fuck this, fuck this topic. I don't want to talk about this. This is this, you know, that's that greediness, that authenticity that that we need. And we've been ripping and running for, for years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even since Valencia, Jess, you know, like I said, Jess is so purely talented and she's, you know, she's funny, you know, and I, she hasn't even scratched the surface on her, on her ability, but just her energy and her enthusiasm is something that uh, she, you know, brings to the table. Giovanni with her traditional background, but then also having that, like, you know, where she can come out of left field where her realness and her authenticity as well. Um, I'm just really blessed that we have this platform and we've had, you know, several people who I thought I would never meet that want to actually, that had a good time in talking on this platform from Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings to, I mean, damn, D.L. Hughley. I got to be one of my influencers, uh, Corey Holcomb. Like we had Kevin on stage. We had, you know, met Jess Hilarious. Um, just so many people. And I know I'm forgetting some folks. Um, and I just want to say, you know, thank you to the my co-hosts, uh, both uh past and present, because like Alan said, anybody who's had a part of the soapbox, um, you are a part of the foundation, um, regardless of how things worked out or whatever, you know, I thank you for believing. And I think it's, people can do things that are trendy, but I just thank everybody for believing in this vision, believing in what I'm trying to do. And we're definitely not done by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we're always, we're forever evolving and this is 50 episodes we've come so far so i'm looking forward to uh episode episode 100 you know when it's got the grays that coming coming from the from the braids and stuff and you know alan is <laughs> alan is in full morgan freeman mode, <laughs> morgan freeman mode and everything so and my beard is either i don't know who knows i i probably get into shape by episode 30 but anyway like we are ever evolving and I appreciate all our listeners, Soapbox Nation, everybody's been a kind word, and all of our guests who have given insight that's just, you know decided to take their time out to come on to the Soapbox, whether you shared, like, posted, uh, we, we thank you. And we're gonna keep going from Portugal to London to Turkey and some of these other international countries that listen to us regularly that we've never met. So that's I think that's pretty dope too. So yeah, so we're not done. Like you said, first episode, the prequel was the journey and the journey continues. And so uh, we appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. Um, and we're just gonna keep working. That's what we do. How about that? All right. So All right. for Alan, for Ish, for Giovanni, for Jesse, uh, did I forget anybody? Let me do this again. For Alan, for Ish, for Giovanni, for Jesse, I'm TJ Legacy. I'm humble. This is episode 50. One year we made it. Soapbox Podcast. Peace. <laughs>